Tesla may be at the forefront of advanced and stylish electric vehicles, but it may soon have some serious competition in the form of a 2018 Nissan LEAF. Nissan finally unveiled the next generation model of its all-electric vehicle this week at an event in Las Vegas Thomas & Mack Center, establishing it as an automaker with one of the more affordable electric vehicles soon to hit the market. We've known about its competitive price and mileage for a while, but the inclusion of the Pro Pilot Assist feature may be what gives the Nissan LEAF a fair shot against Tesla's Model 3. Pro Pilot Assist essentially makes it easier to deal with stop-and-go traffic, while also ensuring drivers stay in the center of their lane, even on curvy roads. It accomplishes this by using a forward-facing camera, forward-facing radar, various sensors, and electronic control module. Nissan's new Pro Pilot Assist eases driver workload by reducing the amount of driver acceleration, steering, and braking input under certain driving conditions, Nissan explains in a press release. It's not on par with Tesla Autopilot, but its presence will go a long way to show that Tesla isn't the only company with high-tech driving features. Furthermore, Business Insider notes that Nissan is also working on a smart rearview mirror capable of streaming a video feed from a camera mounted on the back. The feature will debut with the 2018 Armada SUV first, but if it comes to the Leaf, it'll be another piece of tech that Nissan can use to entice people. Nissan won't be the only company competing with Tesla next year, as the Chevy Bolt will still be around at the same price point, but with a better range. Beyond yet, Hyundai is putting out an electric SUV next year, with Porsche planning to release the Mission E a year later. Then there's still Volvo, Toyota, and Volkswagen, all of which are shifting to electric vehicles. There will soon be an overabundance of electric cars to choose from, which is the best-case scenario. More competition means better features and prices in the future, which will then lead more people to switch from fossil fuel guzzling vehicles to electric cars. In the end, it will be better for all of us and, more importantly, the environment. The LEAF is already the best-selling all-electric car in the world, with 5,400 models purchased in Canada and more than 283,000 globally. But Nissan knows that except for maybe small crossovers, no segment is evolving faster than electrics. Set to go on sale early in 2018, it was more than time to bring on the second-generation LEAF. Propulsion is by a new electric motor producing 147 horsepower, up 40%, and a meaty 236 pounds per foot of torque, up 26%, driving the front wheels though a one-speed direct drive power takeoff. The new 40 kWh lithium-ion battery pack is the same size as the first generation, but is 67% more power dense, resulting in a range of up to 241 km. Charging time is 16 hours with a 110 volt outlet, 8 hours with 240 volt setup, with a bonus of an 80% charge in 40 minutes using a quick charge system. This is a full 5 seat hatchback with cargo volume of 668 liters, 23.6 cubic feet. Canadian specifications are still being worked out and will be in place when the 2018 Leaf goes on sale next spring. But here's what we do know. Canadian pricing will start at $35,998, not including applicable provincial subsidies, and will feature standard heated front and rear seats, heated steering wheel and battery heater. Also standard in Canada is a Level 1 slash Level 2, 120V slash 240V, charger cable. Overall styling is a refreshing return to normalcy with the lozenge look of the first gen leaf dropped and replaced with a hatchback appearance complete with signature Nissan floating roof, front faux V motion grille and boomerang lighting treatments. But the design is also very aerodynamic with a drag coefficient of 0.28, thanks to a blended in upper rear spoiler and a bottom rear diffuser. One major change is a reconfiguration of the front charging port that is now at a more convenient 45-degree angle. Inside, Nissan's gliding wing design language results in a remarkably uncluttered cabin, punctuated by bright blue stitching on the seats, door panels, armrests and steering wheel. The blue color is carried over to the start-stop motor button and the toggle-like shift knob. 
The front console is all new with tandem dual cup holders between the driver's seat and front passenger seat. The idea was to create a new stowage area at the base of the center console, ideal for a smartphone or wallet, as well as an easy reach power switch, a 12 volt power outlet and a USB port. But what the Leaf stands out as a true next-gen EV is exemplified with all the technology packed into it, featuring what Nissan calls intelligent mobility. This is a global initiative that focuses on how Nissan vehicles are driven, powered and integrated into society. Its new ProPilot Assist, Nissan's advanced single-lane driver assistance technology, helps these driver workload by reducing the amount of driver acceleration, steering and braking input under certain driving conditions. While remaining a hands-on system, it previews Nissan's ongoing development of future leading-edge autonomous drive technologies. There were many journalists in Las Vegas for the media reveal, so driving was strictly limited to about 20 miles, which didn't offer much time to sample the car. But with ProPilot activated on the freeway, the Leaf tracks smack in the center between the road lines with none of the wandering I've experienced in previous semi-autonomous driving vehicles. But perhaps the most intriguing technology is the e-pedal that makes it possible to do 90% of driving without using the brake pedal. Believe it or not it is possible to accelerate and also brake using the single pedal on the right. Stopping is accomplished by easing pressure so regenerative braking kicks in with the bonus of replenishing the battery. You can come to a full stop, even on a hill, and the leaf will sit there until you accelerate. However, when it comes to emergency stopping, the normal brake pedal must be used. In addition to all that, the leaf is equipped with intelligent lane intervention, lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert and intelligent around view monitor including moving object detection. I had three other men with me on my drive and the leaf was really quick in downtown Las Vegas, but more so on the freeway where it was virtually road noise free. I was told torsion bar stiffness was increased by 10% while the urethane bump stop for the rear suspension has been replaced by a rubber stop to reduce shocks and bumpiness when driving on uneven roads. Time made it impossible to give readers true driving impressions, but Nissan is promising a full ride and drive event as soon as December, which suits me because I want to know how far it will go with the heater and defrost going in a Canadian winter. Stay tuned. Nissan's pure EV Leaf has been largely dominating the electric car market for seven years. So a refresh has been a long time coming. This week the company finally unveiled a vehicle with a higher range, an optional semi-autonomous feature and one pedal driving. None of this is, is necessarily groundbreaking, but while I was behind the wheel of a pre-production model in Las Vegas, it's apparent the automobile is ready to take on the latest crop of electric cars. The four-door hatchback has all the usual traits of an electric vehicle, super quiet ride, instant on torque and no need to stop by the local gas station. But the big news is the Leaf's 150-mile range. It's a 43-mile improvement over the previous model, but far below the Chevy Bolt, 238 miles, and Model 3, 220 miles. But what it lacks in distance it makes up with in value. It's about $5,000 cheaper than both of those cars, coming in at about $30,000 for the base model. If you're looking to take advantage of the ProPilot semi-autonomous feature, be prepared to drop some cash. For the mid-range Leaf SV which starts at $32,490, which adds Android Auto and CarPlay to the infotainment system, it's part of a $2,200 tech package. On the high-end $36,200 SL, it's a $600 option. Of course all of these prices are before the $7,500 federal tax credit. Fortunately, if you're constantly stuck in traffic, and sadly that's pretty much the norm now, the ProPilot feature is worth it if you're splurging for the SB or SL. That being said, the SL is easier to justify. Like nearly all these sort of self-driving driving systems, its lane assist coupled with adaptive cruise control. Using a front-facing camera radar, 
The car keeps track of lane markers and the vehicle ahead of it. During my test drive, it did a splendid job staying in its lane and tracking the car ahead of it. One thing I did notice is that when you adjust the distance between yourself and the automobile in front of you, it's slow to back off or speed up. It's a smooth transition that some people might appreciate that more aggressive drivers may find annoying. The actual lane tracking did a fine job handling gentle curves. Like other camera-based systems, though, it's dependent on the contrast between the asphalt and the painted line. Snow and heavy rain will disable it, while faded lines will hamper its ability to see where it's going. But on a sunny Vegas day this week, it worked without any issues. Unfortunately, during the test drive I never encountered stop-and-go traffic so I couldn't test how well the system handles coming to complete stop and moving again in pro-pilot mode. Nissan says the car will come to rest on its own. When traffic moves again, the driver can press the pro-pilot button for a few seconds to join the flow.